the sermon today is going to be on our focus. I'm going to give you some examples. Bob, you can relate to this. A microscope, a telescope. We first look through a telescope or a microscope. Things might be blurry until we make an adjustment to bring that into focus. So it's a conscious effort to make that adjustment to bring that into focus. That adjustment is called change. I'm changing the setting. So you're changing that lens view. How about the lens view that we have towards God? Where's our focus at towards God? We need to change our setting, change our view. Now when we talk about vision, you look around, a lot of people wear glasses. If we take our glasses off, things seem to be a little bit blurry. But when we put them on, we have sharpened our vision. We have sharpened our focus. It's like the glasses of faith that we put on for Jesus, which I'm going to touch on a little bit. There's a ministry out there, and they're called Focus on the Family, a very family-focused ministry. It talks about relationships and couples. They talk about bringing the children up under the eyes of God. So their ministry name starts out with focus. Now there's other areas of your life that you need to focus on. For example, working. If you're not focused on your job, you're not going to be successful at it. For example, would you want a doctor to operate on you if he wasn't focused on what he was doing? I don't think so. Would you want a contractor to build a house for you if they weren't focused on following the plan and doing it the right way? I don't think so. You need to focus on things like cooking. If you don't watch that grill or that stove, and you lose the focus and get distracted, what happens? Probably got to burn the meal. Playing sports. Again, it's something else that you need to focus on. I like to play golf. And if I don't focus on the shot, if I don't think about a positive shot and focus on it, I don't have a good game. We all have established goals in life. If you don't focus on those goals, to achieve those goals, those goals will never be reached. If you are not focused on any of these things above, the result is going to be not what you expected. It's going to be less than successful. Now today, <laughs> there seems to be more focus with people doing this for texting and tweeting, right? Posting about their life rather than living it. When we are focused on devices, what happens? We have our heads down. I'm looking down at this device and I'm walking around. And if I really was focused, and I could fall right off of there. It has happened. And it happens. You see in the paper, people fall on the train tracks, walking into a tree, walking into a door, their heads down. They lose focus on their direction. Just like when we don't have focus on God, we lose focus on the direction that He has for us. Our direction can be found in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we're going to be focusing on heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. Here the Apostle Paul reminds us we are citizens of heaven. We live under God's protection. We can appeal to Him directly with any need that we have. We should not give our consent to live by the values or ways of this world. 
Because if you think about the values of this world, where they are today versus in 1950, the values have changed, and they've changed for the worse. But most people, they just concede to that. They just go along with that. That's not where we need to be. We were created to live a heads-up perspective. Looking down, we may find ourselves more focused on worries or anxieties of life. Looking down will keep us from staying focused on our eternal destination. But looking up allows us to take a view that is focused on the promises of God, the character of God, the purpose God has planned for all of us. In the morning, first thing in the morning, when I go down to hit the button on the coffee pot, I look out the window and I look up. I look up at the sky. I look up knowing God has a plan for me. And I ask Him to have the Holy Spirit be with me every day. It's that look up in the morning, knowing He is there. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2 it says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. That was in that Billy Graham opening I had today. And again, here Paul wrote, he said, Set your mind on things above. Not on the earthly things. That is, concentrate your concern on the eternal, not the temporal. Fix your eyes not on what is seen or what is unseen. For what is temporary, for what is seen as temporary, is just that, it's temporary. But what is unseen, that is eternal. Set your eyes on Jesus. Now, I've met a lot of people in my travels. And once I understand somebody's real focus, I generally get a good idea of who they are. I can determine if they have their focus on things here on this earth or if they have their focus on God. It doesn't take long to figure it out. If you really want to know the makeup of a person and what makes them really tick, just examine what their focus is. Doesn't take long to figure these people out. Our focus reflects our priorities. Our focus is what is most important in our lives. Our focus is comprised of those things that we have determined matter and have made a decision to act on it. So if we focus on God and we determine that God matters and that He's the most important thing in our life and He's our number one priority, how can we go wrong? As we live our lives today, it's so easy to lose focus on what's important. It's easy to get caught up in the problems of life we forget where our focus is supposed to be. We, let me remind you, however, that Jesus is going to return at any time. And it is our job to be ready for Him, to be focused. Are you ready, I say? Hmm. Heard me preach that sermon before. I usually resurrect it once a year and tweak it up a little bit. Are you ready? Because if we're not focused on Him now, we're not going to be ready. We should have a sense of urgency in our life as it relates to our relationship with Jesus. Amen. Our walk with Jesus should be more than just coming to church once a week. We are called to live our lives for the glory of God. We should live with an awareness of Jesus in our lives. That awareness should be a key focus each day. And remembering that Jesus is going to come back. Again I say, are you ready? In the mornings when I look up and I pray, I also say that if this is the day, 
I am ready, Lord. I'm ready to go. Some mornings I wish it would happen that day because of all the things that were hung up with in this world. But that focus that I have every morning helps me cope with all these other things. When you are facing tough times, what are you focused on? When you are in the midst of prosperity, what are you focused on? Here's the opposite end. Tough times, prosperity. When you are confronted with a choice between two things, which choice do you make? What are you focused on? Well, on all of these three questions, if our focus was on Jesus, He'll help us make the right decision. We won't forget about Him when we, are, when we have prosperity and we're, we're getting blessed. And He will help us through those tough times. We can't do it on our own. We need Him to be there with us to help us get through. Why does it surprise us when our vision constantly trips us up. We get distracted. Well, because we tend to look around and focus on the wrong things. And as we do so, that tends to bring us down. We start to develop our own little pity party. Mm, why aren't things going my way? We know who they are. Why does so-and-so get everything that they want? Why do those people that aren't church-going people so much, they get so much, and here I am stuck with nothing. Why do I never get the breaks in life? Why is it that bad things always come into my life? Here's the answer. Here's why. The answer to all of these questions. The problem is that we often look at things with earthly eyes, rather than heavenly eyes. We tend to look at things through our own glasses rather than the glasses equipped with faith. Early on you heard me talking about taking our glasses on and off. How about putting the glasses of faith on? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. So if we have that faith, we have that hope, we have that comfort, and if we're focused on God, we know we'll get guided. But remember, things of this earth, we want now immediate gratification. We need to have patience also. We need to pray for patience to allow us to be able to endure through until God comes through. Door through until God comes through. Amen. So we need to stay focused. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, what Linda read earlier today, Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining to focus to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. We need to stay focused on God because God has a plan for our life. His plan for us is perfect. Now, if you stay focused on His perfect plan for you, you have to ask yourself, am I fulfilling God's perfect plan? If not, you're getting off track. You're losing the focus. You're getting derailed. You constantly have to reel that in every day. And remember that focus. He created us for a purpose. It's His plan, not ours. God has a perfect work for you to do. He already laid it out. You are listening with faith to understand His purpose because God has called you. He's called every one of us for something. But taking that quiet time, praying, listening, having the faith, that plan will start to be revealed to us.
terms of what He wants us to do for Him. We can lose focus on God and His plan when we fight the wrong battle and waste energy in doing so. Many of us constantly fight battles that we shouldn't fight. Have you ever gotten yourself involved in something where you think, now what am I doing in the middle of this? Right? It happens. Yes, we all have been in that battle. What am I doing in the middle of this mess? How did I get involved with all this? Why should I be involved in all this? And you're stuck and you can't seem to get out. So when we're fighting our own battles, it's easy to lose our focus. Our focus is our salvation, and the enemy cannot take our salvation away from us. If you are in Christ, the Bible says that nobody can take you out of the hands of Almighty God. So the devil can't take your soul. The devil can't take your salvation if you have given your heart to Jesus Christ. If you have given your heart to Jesus Christ. Then you're free. And the Bible says, He whom the Son sets free will be free indeed. We'll be free of all of this turmoil here on this earth. He sets us free. Focus on moving forward with your walk with Christ. Every day, focus on saying, what would Jesus do? Do I have Him with me? Am I walking with Him every day? Focus to achieve the goal which God has for us. In Matthew, Jesus was saying to His disciples, do not worry about what you're going to wear or what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. That can be found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 32 and 33. So He's telling us, don't worry about these things. Focus on me. Seek the kingdom of heaven first. All these things will be added unto you. He will make provisions for you. Jesus is telling us that all things that we want, desire, and chase after are simply ancillary to His kingdom. However, if we change our focus, as I said in the beginning, it takes a conscious effort to make that adjustment, make that change. We could simply change our agenda to be a kingdom agenda. I want the kingdom. I want heaven. My agenda, my goal is to be there. Because it's eternal. If we would seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all these things will be added unto us. Amen.